DJ Fab. It's Chicago, nigga. It's the real one. Get back. Only one that's pulling shit. Let's get some sports talk. And Clowney joined the Seattle Seahawks last September. He purchased number 90 from defensive tackle Jerron Reed, who was suspended several games to start the season. This week, Jerron Reed took to Twitter to announce that he has number 90 back, which caused people with basic functioning brains to conclude that Clowney must not be coming back now that Jerron Reed is reclaiming his number 90. And then Reed, <laughs> Reed got upset at the media for making a story out of what he said that he's wearing number 90 again Seahawks GM John Schneider said on ESPN 710 Seattle that he has yet to approve any changes to numbers I think you're buying into it because I don't remember approving that yet so I don't know I don't know where that came from but yesterday morning it was definitely something was going on so there look with Clowney and they could have used this unrestricted free agent tender device earlier this week and offered him 16 and a half million for one year and they didn't so whatever they're willing to pay him is something south of 16 and a half million you know this is a reality where you got a guy who's banged up kind of like the cam newton situation big cat where people want to be able to let their doctors look at him before they sign him to a contract especially of the magnitude he wants so it just kind of is there and it's just lingering and i think and that's what making them hesitate they just want to know can they Trust him to be on the field consistent. That's what's taking them so long to sign him. That's why they're trying to sign him to a franchise tag because they don't know they can trust him to be on the field all the time. But he's looking to get a big contract from Seattle. And they're still trying to figure out how to get that done. They want to make sure if he healthy for next season and everything. They're trying to figure that out. Out and he just he he, he want to stay in Seattle, like he just want a extension from him. It continues to linger until these facilities open up again and somebody can bring Jadavian Clowney in and make sure he's healthy and ready to go. Isn't this another one? To my point, though, Mike, isn't this another one where Jadavian Clowney and I know the physical part, I, I get that, but under regular circumstances, he would have been signed already to a lot of money, and you can say physical, but. How would it work? Tell me how it would work. I know you know more about the NFL and how the legalese work. You you were a lawyer at one point, allegedly. Uh, I have to say the word alleged because I don't know if you've been disbarred. That's neither here nor there. <laughs> no, where did that come <laughs> from? Do you still have your? Do you still have your? Uh, no. Are you allowed to? No. Okay. All right. So you no. disbarred yourself. That way, that way, Dis I don't have to give anybody free legal advice. It was a. It was. Okay. It was one of the smartest moves I ever made. That is smart, but. Here's my here's what, what I'm getting at, Mike. How will it work if you sign, say Jade Van Clowney signs a big, you know, three year deal, tons of money up front, guaranteed, you know, a signing bonus, this season doesn't happen. Does he get to keep that? Is he now one more year down the line in his contract? Well, look, that's a different issue than and it's a broader issue, I should say than just what happens with Jadavian Clowney because hundreds of millions of dollars changed hands in March when the NFL decided to go ahead with free agency on the front end of this episode that we're still dealing with. It just when you a banged up player and all that, teams tend to be hesitant to throw big money at you because they know about your injury history and they second guess they so like he was healthy coming in his rookie year and lead up to now, he would have been got a big contract for anyone. It just that injury history would play a part of teams being skeptical to, to, uh, to give him that money. Because he is a good run stopper for a team. You know, he get to the quarterback, not as much how you want to, but he's a good player to give money to. It just... It's just the injury history. So there isn't a general hesitation to spend money. There's a specific hesitation to spend money on someone you can't give a physical to, like Clowney and like Cam Newton. But you're touching on something that at some point we need to delve in a little more carefully. We've heard a lot about the NBA's collective bargaining agreement and the power that they have to squeeze the players for some money back because there's a specific clause in there 
that applies to a situation like this, that applies to a pandemic. The NFL's labor deal doesn't have anything like that in there. And there is a very persuasive argument to be made that if for some reason the NFL doesn't play at all this season, the NFL Players Association can take the position and potentially prevail that you got to pay us. you got to pay us anyway. So, look, I don't know how much the coaches and the football people are paying attention to this. I've asked questions about salary cap next year because obviously it'll be down if there aren't fans in the stands and they're getting ticket revenue. But um, I, the, look, the, there is a huge mess looming if they can't play the games. And that makes me think that they're determined to get the games oh. played. No matter what, they're going to get these games played because of the money that may change hands even if they don't play. Okay, but then, then it goes back to, to my original point that even if there's a – and I, I agree with you that I think the games will get played because there's too much money at stake and, and it just will happen. But even if there's a 5% chance, why even risk throwing – They're going to figure out some way to get the season going because they saying it might be uplifted, so the season's going to start potentially – probably start at the right time or later. But they just still trying to figure out the situation with clowning. That's what they're trying to do. Because money is going to change, man. Money is going to keep rising every year. And they need to play this year because the fans draw the money when they, they put the butts in the seats. Millions of dollars out the window if there's a 5% chance when you know that if everyone sits and waits, we can get some assurances that the season's going to start. So that's why he hasn't been signed yet. No, if he was healthy, he'd have been signed in March. If he was free and clear, he'd have been signed in March. I, I, I guarantee you. If, if Cam Newton had been cut in February, he would have been uh, given a proper... That's the only thing that's stopping from Clary and Cam Newton to get to uh, DB signed to these contracts, bro, in. It's just the injury histories is what's held them back for getting on contracts. They just want to trust that you're going to be in the field every Sunday, potentially every Monday, Thursday. They just want to see if you're going to be healthy enough to be on the field to contribute. And that's why teams are just hesitant to bring them in. Is that the injury history play a part of holding them back from getting signed so so quick? Physical before the facilities were closed, and somebody would have signed him. I don't think it's about money with these guys. It's about health, and you combine the inability to give them a physical with their financial demands, and it's enough to get people to say, "Here's where we draw the line." But you go back and look at the deals that were done. A lot of money was spent. Kirk Cousins got a three-year. Six, what, $96 million uh, extension with the Vikings or something like that, or a two-year $66 million extension. He's under contract for three years, 96. So uh, they, they weren't reluctant to spend. They were reluctant to spend on guys that have those injury questions. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make DJ Ferris. Chicago, oh, nigga. Oh, it's the real one. Hit back. Only one that's pulling shit before.